All right, all right. Good afternoon and good morning to everyone, uh, wherever you might be joining from, Africa, United States, Europe, you're most welcome. My name is Benga Mataya. Uh, it's a great pleasure to be here this Friday afternoon. I hope you're all doing great. I hope your week has been awesome and excellent. Uh, I'm okay. I'm doing great. Uh, it's great to be alive. And again, we're here today um, as in, in one of our a series on, you know, towards the event that is coming up next month. Uh, we just like to have a little dialogue and conversation uh, around the event that is happening next month. Um, so today we're going to be speaking on Export and Prosper program. Um, and we're going to be focusing on building and navigating relationships across borders. Uh, Export and Prosper program. Have a little dialogue and conversation. For those who do not know, the Export and Prosper program, it's a program that we created to better help African and U.S. entrepreneurs to do business together, uh, leveraging the platform of trade. And this is very uh, instrumental to what we're doing next month. Uh, our organization, like you know, we have partners and relationships across the continent of Africa. We have chambers of commerce and we have individuals and, and businesses that we're working with. And so the thinking is how best can we leverage our relationship if not by bilaterally uh, working with each other. Uh, I'll be telling you a little bit more about the program, but like I said today, we're just talking about, uh, you know, managing relationships, you know, because when you're dealing across borders, relationship requires a special approach. And so today I'm excited uh, to have my guests on the, on the line. Uh, I'm glad to have Mr. Moses uh, Waswa, all the way from Uganda, Mr. Moses is the managing director of Swift Minds and a member of Parliament candidate. Um, he's a great guy, he's a business guy, and he's versatile in international trade. So, Mr. Moses, welcome. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Benga. And I'm glad to be here. And thank you, all of you who, who have... Uh, you know, tuned in. Uh, we are glad uh, to have you, and thank you for having me. Of course, of course. It's always a great pleasure to have you, my friend. Uh, yeah. How is weather in Uganda right now? And I know it's uh, so, the night time right now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, the weather is a bit, uh, it's a bit uh, wet. It's a bit rainy right now. Uh, we've been blessed to have a tropical uh, kind of climate here. It. it it rains, it, it shines just uh, because of climate change. Uh, of recent, we had a bit of, you know, high uh, temperature weather. But right now, it's quite, it's quite interesting. You could go outside bare chest. You could choose to, you know, cover yourself or not. It's just good weather. Awesome. That's the beauty of life. And so, um, thank you so much, Moses. So, again... I'd like to give a little background, a little bit more background about this program. Uh, so over the years, Africa has been seen to uh, be more or less like a begging continent where our leaders come and they ask for help in terms of financial donations and grants and things like that. And here we are, we have one of the greatest continents in Africa that has the highest amount of deposit of natural resources, arable lands, natural resources. We have the youngest population. We have the fastest growing population. And so when, I, when we begin to continue to speak about the, the, the value and, and the, the, the benefits and the awesomeness of the continent, then you begin to wonder, why do we have to come to the table begging? And so at the U.S. Africa Trade and Business Network, we come up with a program, Export and, Export and Prosper. And like I had said in my introduction, we have U.S. businesses, exporters, the diasporans who want to do business in Africa and with Africa. In fact, some of them are currently doing exactly this. We have... Americans going into countries like Ghana to buy products 
and hopefully one of our guests will join us as well to speak to what she's doing. We have Americans going in to buy natural products, to buy products like uh, shea butter, to buy products like um, to buy products like uh, shea butter, and to buy products like um, like oils, organic oils, and they, they they bring them to the United States and they add value to them. They package them, you see. And so we also have our farmers our entrepreneurs in Africa who want to do business in the U.S. They want to bring their product to the U.S. and they need access to market. So our job is to connect people in Africa with products, with those in the U.S. looking to buy this product because that is always been the problem. Because right now in Africa, there is a whole lot of product, value-added product, looking for market, but no access to market. So our organization is working to provide access by connecting these buyers and sellers together. And that's pretty much what the Export and Prosper program is all about. Now, the beautiful thing, the beautiful thing about this program is that it's it's just very simple, it's very easy. And again, it's it's ethical, it's it's uh it's um it's sustainable. In the sense that we have people like my guest, which I'm going to introduce very shortly, Dion, who goes into Africa and they buy products. And why they do that? They're giving back to the continent. They're giving back to the continent. They have nonprofit organizations. They're empowering these people in the continent. And not only that, they're cutting away middlemen so they can pay top dollars for this product. And so doing this is helping our, our folks in Africa. And this is what this conversation is all about. And when you do that, there's a way, a manner, which you build and navigate this relationship. And so that's why we're having this conversation. And so shortly before I come to you, Moses, uh, I like to I like to welcome and to to recognize uh, Dion Davis, um, who is going to be speaking with us today. And so Dion is a co-founder. Uh, of Nature Share Butter Incorporated, and they're doing exactly what we're going to be talking about. How are you doing, Dehan? <laughs> I am wonderful, thank God. How are you? Sorry for I'm the delay. Great. The awesome. Wi-Fi here is not the best. <laughs> it's okay, but we can hear you clearly, and awesome. you're looking great. Uh, and I also have with me uh, another of our uh, speaker today. And you know, Moses, why don't you? Why don't we start by you introducing yourself? Thank you very much, uh, Benga. Um, well, glad to be here, and it's great to have Dion on uh, on, on the on, on the on, on the on this. Uh, um, glad to have you. Looks like you're still in the office. So, <laughs> yeah. So I am from Uganda. My name is Waswa Moses. I'm from Uganda. I am the managing director of Swift Minds, which is a human resource and uh, human capital management company, and as well as managing management and uh, capacity building consulting. Uh, I'm, well, I'm, I'm just glad. Uh, previously, you said uh, member of parliament candidate. That was 2020, 2021. I was the member of parliament candidate here, even though I didn't go through. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm proud, proud to have participated Thank you. Thank you, Moses. Um, okay, so over to you, Dion. Why don't you introduce yourself? Hello, everyone. My name is Dion Davis, and I, um, as Benga said, I'm the co-founder of Nature Shea Butter, Inc. We are direct importers of shea butter, and we sell it retail. We sell it um, wholesale. Um, we do private labeling, and um, what we do is the profits that we receive, we use it to help um, women in Uganda who are survivors of domestic violence. So we believe in giving back. Um, we are also looking to actually create jobs for these women as well. Um, as Because we also believe it's important, even though we're helping them to teach them how to be self-sustainable also. Um, so these are some of the things that we do as a result of um, our importing business. And as I uh, 
can tell you as a woman and breaking into that market, it was not, uh, uh, it was a little challenging, but I believe that the challenges that I went through are to help me, uh, uh, allowing me to help other women to enter that same market and do the same things that we did and just make it a little easier for them. So I just thank God for it. Awesome. Thank you so much, Dia. And, and absolutely. So the, the lesson learned and the knowledge you've gained is what we're going to be talking about today. Um, it's it's really challenging for you to build relationship across borders and to be able to communicate across different cultures and, you know, and norms. So let me ask you, what are some of the challenges that you, you encountered um, in the process of being uh, a buyer and importer of share butter? And which of the countries did, did you uh, do this business? Um, we imported from Nigeria and it, it was a little challenging with what we needed on our end and what they needed to provide on their end because um, I wouldn't say that they're more lax <laughs> over there, but it, it's kind of like, no, we need these documents and they're kind of like, well, you know, it's no big thing, but it is a big thing, you know, for us over here, it actually can delay process over here, which we encountered some of those delays because we didn't have certain documents initially when our shipment came in, which um, allow our shipments to be held. So we had to like kind of scramble and say, we need these documents. So it is kind of like the, 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 the disconnect with how uh, stringent, I guess, we are here. And I guess they're a little more laid back there. So it was just kind of that you know, trying to get that connect together. So that was one of the biggest challenges. <laughs> okay, so so thank you. So let's talk about uh, documentation, which in a way is part of compliance as well. Mm. Uh, and one of the things we do in this organization is we act as a clearinghouse for, for entrepreneurs on both sides of the divide. We guide them and we show them what they need to do and how to get across these challenges. Um, and so uh, I'm going to come to Moses in a, in a little bit. So I wanted to, I want to find out from you. I don't know if you guys have heard about AFTAD, which is the African Continental Free Trade Agreement. So one of the, one of the solutions of AFTA is to make it easy for people like you, Dion, to do business in Africa, which is to, to streamline the processes of getting documentations across different countries. Um, and, and, and so if Moses, if you've heard about that, uh, I would like to find out from you, Moses, would you be able to speak to these challenges? Do you think Africa uh, as a nation, uh, as a continent, uh, doing all that is needed to make it easier for importers to be able to get the needed documentations at the relevant agencies doing all the necessary um, you know, sensitization for importers. Because over the years, we have Africa coming to the U.S. to pitch and say, come and do business in Africa, come and do business in Africa. So would you say they're doing enough? And, and can you speak to that? Oh, thank you. Uh, well, I, I, I think in Uganda, we uh, the government is really trying their best to make sure that a uh, lot of what is required is put in place. Uh, for example, uh, there is what now we call the, the express uh, clearing points at all the borders, where uh, you have an integrated system uh, of every, every documentation that has to you know, be uh, submitted for import or export. So the government is really trying uh, uh, their best uh, through the, you, uh, for example, in Uganda, the Uganda Revenue Authority, right. but also uh, uh, African governments and African uh, uh, politicians and leaders are doing their best to make sure that uh, we have a free movement of, tra of, of, of goods and services um, in between uh, the different countries. I know that that there are treaties over treaties and over treaties. I know that in terms of administration, sometimes some of these things are, for example, last time I was, I was listening to Aliko, Mr. Aliko Dangote, saying that 
sometimes these these policies are in place but when you go across for example from nigeria and you're going mm -hmm. to benin right you are you you are stopped in a way mm -hmm. yeah so those are isolated cases <laughs> those and, and are those isolated are and those are real those are real challenges yeah and so that's why mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. go ahead sorry yeah so, so those are some of the challenges that that are there but as for now what i know i know that uh, i know that <clears throat> i know that whoever is importing and exporting things are improving by the day you awesome. know, um, making sure that we have for example right now we have uh, express uh, clearance tickets we have uh, things like um, uh, we have things like free, you know, we don't have some countries, you don't need visas to go there. So those are some of the things that are being worked on to make sure that trade is at the easiest in Africa. And I, and I agree with you, uh, Dion, truly, Africa is doing all that is possible to make it easier to do business with, with Africa. The challenge is the connecting and communicating clearly to the right people. And that is why in 2019, right? You agree. And that is why in 2019, when we started this uh, project, we realized that there is no platform to speak together, to connect together, so that what they are saying, the right people are getting that message. And that's why it's very important, the event that we're having. Uh, in fact, we have a whole session uh, that will be speaking on cross-border compliance between the U.S. and Africa. We have an international trade lawyer. We have a customs broker. We have people who are actually doing the business that will be in that panel discussion to be talking about these challenges. Now, let me blow your mind. Uh, Dion, when you said you had documentation challenge, do you know that according to the customs in the U.S., over 80% of why they stop product coming in or why they have to destroy products is due to simple mistakes, compliance issues, like labeling and packaging. And why is because we, we can't hear you. I thought it was just me because I know my Wi-Fi has been acting funny. <laughs> <laughs> You're, are you, you in Kampala? No, I'm in New York, but I'm oh, in the okay. hospital at the moment. <laughs> we so can't hear you yet, up. Benga. I'll end up hosting the show. <laughs> <laughs> no. Can you hear me? Yeah, yes. you're back on. Yes. Oh, okay. The, the angels have visited you. <laughs> yes. Thank you so much. Yeah. So the challenge are things that can be fixed. These challenges are things that can be fixed, but the people are not getting the right message. And that's why it's important having this conversation in preparation for our event next week. We want Africans to know that the U.S., want to do business with Africa. Uh, the United States is the, is the, is the biggest um, uh, buyer, you know? They buy everything. Uh, they buy everything, so they want to do business with us. But our people have to follow the rules. Either you're in Africa or you're in the U.S., we want you to get the right information. Now, let me, let me quickly go back to Dion. Are there any other challenge that you can think about that you encountered why doing business with Africa? Um, well, definitely the time zone. I mean, it's nothing you could do about that. It's because when <laughs> when we're able to talk, you know, it, it doesn't, you know, the times don't coincide. And then sometimes I'm, you know, getting a message four o'clock in the morning and I'm like, no, I'm sleeping at that time. But I mean, these are those are things that we cannot get around. <laughs> But it was it was a little bit of a challenge for us. But I mean, we we were able to work it out, and navigate through it. <laughs> um, Amosis. Yeah, because um, your head towers are ahead of us now. So to speak to that. Yeah, 
Yeah, right now, actually, anytime you see my, my son popping up and saying, oh, daddy, yeah. <laughs> because I'm home now, right now, and I'm a, I'm, I'm a family guy, so when it's time, I, I usually come and play with them, but I've just asked them to take, a, to take some leave so that we can have a good conversation here, but uh, being in the business of, of, of manpower and talent management, uh, one of the biggest challenge here, I think, um, I think uh, my 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 my, uh, I think Dion will, will will attest to this. One of the biggest challenges is finding uh, uh, the right talent uh, to work with. Uh, <clears throat> first of all, the trust, and and the other thing is skilling. Uh, one of the biggest, uh, for example, if I give, let me give perspective to this. Um, agriculture takes uh, 24, 24, almost 24 percent of, 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 of the economy here in Uganda, with coffee being the leading, uh, uh, being the leading uh, product that we export. And then you have industry coming to uh, 25.5. Then you have services, which is 50.3 percent. That is a very big, big, big uh, percentage. So when 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 you look at us being, uh, you know, being able to export uh, and, and, you know, getting to the level uh, where uh, people in the U.S. or importers in the U.S. can accept our products. One, we have uh, to ask ourselves, are we on the same standards? And I think there's a still a very, very big market. There's still a very big opportunity for uh, the U.S. companies and U.S. people to come here and also invest in, in you know, skilling the manpower, skilling the human resource in Africa, and also uh, helping companies get to those acceptable standards. You see, uh, Benga, it's easy for you to say what I'm providing is not to the standard, but how have you helped? And I think that's the reason why we're having the U.S. Africa Hub is to tackle such things, uh, to, to, to come and, you know, uh, get those issues sorted. The biggest issue here is skilling the human resource and helping people um, skill up to the standards that are acceptable internationally. Benga, I think you're off again. Yeah, so uh, basically as, as, as Benga comes on, the biggest, uh, I think the biggest challenge is people. Uh, you're back on. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. Oh, forgive me, guys. So okay. I was saying that um, in my introduction, I had mentioned that um, Africa has the youngest population, fastest growing population. And here you are, you are a human resource expert and professional. Uh, how best can we leverage this opportunity, um, you know, to, to, to be able to tap into this potential of human resources? Because think about it this way. When people hear about export and import, people always think it's all about product, about goods, physical product. But do you know by definition, exportation is when you sell a service or a product outside of your home country? So if you have a spe specific skills and you're, you're a consultant and you're consulting for an organization outside of Uganda, you are exporting your product, you're exporting your service. So how best do we leverage this opportunity? And these are some of the conversations that we're going to be sharing with people because a lot of our professionals, even here, when you talk about export, they think, oh, I don't want to be an expert. I don't, have, I don't know anything about exportation. But no, you can be an exporter with, with your service that you currently provide. Any service that you provide, you can export them. Yes, you can comment, Moses. You're muted. So, yes, uh, in terms of service, so like when I, when, when I talk about, when we talk about products, of course, when we talk about export, import, most people think about product. Product is good. And just like the coffee that I'm taking right now, it's very interesting. Uganda produces one of the best coffees in the whole world. 
the best yeah. coffee in the whole world. So probably someone doesn't know that. Can but you prove we, that? Oh, come on. You have your Google. You go there and, and you know, you'll have. But but I think we're among the people that produce the, one of the best coffees uh, together with Ethiopia and, and you know, and, um, and, and, uh, and Brazil. So the, the products, yes. And, and I, I really applaud that the likes of, of Dion who are in, in the products industry, but the service also requires, um, it takes 50% of the whole industry in Africa. And, and, and we need to, you know, uh, get to a point where uh, these services are standardized. For example, you could export uh, your services into the telecom sector. It's still very young here in Africa, very young in Uganda. Uh, uh, the other sector could be uh, science and technology. Then you have tourism. Tourism. Guys, here you can make a kill. But how do you tap into that potential? Is to connect with, um, with the real people here, the real companies here. I know that some people are scared. They think Oh, Africa looks like this. We can't find people who are genuine. I'm here. You know, <laughs> I there's, like there's, I mean, I'm here. There's, there's, there's people here that are willing. And actually, Africa is one of the most hospitable continents because everyone will want to share some kind of information with you. When you come in Uganda and, and someone realizes you're a foreigner, everyone wants to talk to you. They want to explain something. They want to explain one or two things. So it, it, it's just... People need to reach out, people in the U.S. and at different places, just reach out and get to know that there is real people here to do business with. There is real people to provide you with all the information that you need. Thank you, Moses. I'm going to come to Dehan in a little bit, but I just want to re-echo what you said. There are real people, there are real organizations to work with, and I'm glad you brought it up because when you speak with people from the U.S., one of the challenges... One of the things they talk about is, oh, hello, young man. Hello, young man. That's the hello. boss right there. <laughs> Break, breaking transmission. <laughs> hello. You're muted, Moses. I, I told you anytime we'll be joined by our guests. <laughs> <laughs> now we have a special guest. Yes, I love yes. it. Because we are using their time right now. So, yes, you know. yes, yes. Yeah. And we apologize to him. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Good to good to have you. So, yes. as I was yeah. saying. Hi. Uh, how are you Hi. doing? Fine. Oh, I love it. Daddy, wow. can you put down the volume? Okay. Okay. Go on. That's that's the future <laughs> professor right there. Yeah. You know, and we're doing this because for their future Hi. as well. How are you? Hi. Hello. Hi. Hello. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> awesome. Don't worry. We'll talk to you later. Okay. Okay. All right. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Thanks for sharing that moment with us, Moses. It's yeah. all about. Our future. Yeah. So, thank you. Uh, of course. So, uh, I lost my thought. Uh, I was saying something. I lost my thought right now. I think um, I was trying to make a point on. Oh, I can't remember. But um, I was trying. Uh, man, I need to remember this. What was I saying now? I was talking to Dion, but I can't remember what it was. Uh, you said you were going to reiterate on what Moses spoke about. Yes. He says something about, well, what did he, okay. Yes. I remember. Thank you for helping me out. So I was going to say that Moses was saying that um, people don't trust, um, uh, uh, people don't trust people from Africa because of maybe one or two uh, isolated uh, experience they've had, but I'm here to say that one of the things our organization is doing is to make sure that our suppliers, they are vetted, they are reliable. Whatever they say they will do is what they will do. And we provide oversight to make sure that nobody is taking advantage of anyone else. So if you're out there, you're in the U.S., you're looking to do business in Africa, or you want to do business with Africa, or you're in Africa, you're looking to access the U.S. market. 
you have us right here to protect your interest. And I think Dion can speak to this. Um, we recently connected Dion and, and, and our co-founder to, to a gentleman in Ghana, um, you know, looking to sell share butter. And even though we don't speak, we don't get involved in the business, like we don't intrude, but we make sure that we're providing oversight. We're looking at the thread of the conversation. If we see a red flag, we stop it right there and we tell them, no, this is what we think. This is what we think. So, And that's why people have nothing to worry about. Uh, our organization is a 501c3 uh, nonprofit. We are solidly, solidly on ground. We have a lot of professionals with us in this game. The integrity is there. So if you're looking to access in the market, if you don't want to make the mistake that Dion made the first time, if you don't want to make that mistake, either way, you need to be working with us and you need to come to our event and you need to follow us because we're there to guide you and to support you. So Dion, uh, before we round up, would you like to tell us uh, how this experience has been for you? How does it make you feel emotionally uh, that you're, you're, you're supporting people, you're helping people, you're doing business with them, but in an ethical manner? And can you speak to some of the things that you guys are doing in Africa as well? Um, okay, so in regards to uh, the USA, Africa, this, this program, I thank you, Benga, for it because it, it gives a little bit of an ease, you know. Um, we are type of people that, you know, reference, you know, word of mouth. If somebody says this is good or this person is good, you kind of feel a little more, you know, comfortable dealing with them. And that has been the case with the gentleman you put us in connection with. And it's been, you know, smooth, the, the transitioning. Um, we also know certain things to ask for now because we've already went through the first process. So we're able to ask these questions to him and able to get the responses. And it's, it's actually way less stressful, I have to say. That first go around was extremely stressful extremely extremely stressful so this is really um a program that i can say from experience that it's needed it's definitely needed um in regards to so i just want to thank you benga thank you <laughs> thank you i appreciate <laughs> thank that you. Dear. thank you awesome. um in in regards to the work that we're um doing in uganda um my co-founder nicole she wasn't uh able to be on uh she was trying to get on, but I don't think she was able to to get on to, to view. But this was something that was placed in her, in her spirit, because um, we started the organization here to help survivors of domestic violence. And she ended up going to Uganda on a missions trip. And we know nothing happens by chance, right? You know, nothing is just coincidence. Everything mm -hmm. is orchestrated by God. So she ended up meeting a gentleman down there. And when she came back, he reached out to her and said that he had, you know, he, he just was led to, to reach out to her um, because there are some women there that have come to him and entrusted him in situations they've been in. And she started working with him and partnering with him to help these women. And then we created an um, organization there, um, the Marembe African Peace Village, where we help to uh, rescue women from these situations and their children. Um, I think we have about 54 children, if I'm not mistaken right now, that are in the, um, the village. And there are probably about seven or eight women, um, if I'm not mistaken because we, we get women all the time. They come through the program and then some women, as we say, graduate, they're able to, you know, have their business, sustain themselves. And um, we're happy for them. We love when they reach that point that they don't need to be supported by the village, but they are still a part of the village. So um, we also, as I said, we believe in giving back. So everything that we're doing that we are prospering from, we believe in, in blessing others with it. So we are just, thankful and grateful to be able to do um, this work in Uganda. Um, we're also looking to set up, as I said, businesses in Uganda that can also help these women as well. So 
So we also know now the process that we need to go through because we've gone through some of it already. <laughs> mm -hmm. So this has been a, a learning lesson and, but it's been a blessing at the same time. So, you know, we don't look at anything as, you know, negative. We see the, the blessing and the positiveness and everything that we've experienced and everything that we're doing. And we just thankful that and thank God that we're able to do what the work that we're doing. Cause we know that that's why God led us to this business to be able to, um, help the women in Uganda. Wow. Thank you so much. And other Deanne. places too. Yeah. And other places. Thank you. I mean, think about the ripple effect of what just an individual organization is doing. And think about what would happen if more are jumping in to do okay. the same. Um, it doesn't stop you. In fact, our model is built around people who are professionals. They have nine to five. They want to do this, do this as a side also. It's so scalable and sustainable because it's very simple. It's not difficult for you to do this business, just like Dion and Nicole, they are doing right now. So we want to thank you on behalf of the continent. We want to thank you for what you do uh, for the continent. And it's a call to action to other uh, Africans in the diaspora, whether you are historical, whether you are continental, if you are a black person, even if you're a non-black person, but you believe in the, the vision of Africa, you're a friend of Africa, and you want to do business with Africa, you need to connect with us. And I just want to quickly say that uh, Nicole is actually listening in. She said, I'm here. So uh, Nicole is uh, Dion's co-founder. So uh, Dion, why don't you send that link to Nicole? Oh, yes. Okay. So she can use that link to connect, if you would like to come on, so we can hear from... Um, from uh nicole so listen this this is awesome so i just want to again thank both of you for taking the time especially moses that i think you're around 8 p.m your time now and of course why don't you speak about your role you're going to be part of the event uh for those who want to connect virtually you're going to be speaking at this event as well so why don't you um, let your audience know that you'll be at the event and they can connect. Oh, yes. Um, thank you very much, Benga. Um, this is a great, uh, great, great conversation, and I think it's a really, really great platform. And uh, very uh, blessed to, to hear about Dion's story. Uh, that is already something uh, in the, the right direction. You know, mm -hmm. the, every time... Every time, if you want to find out that something works, you have to look at the results. So the result itself is here, and that's the end. That's <laughs> right. I know there's a lot of people who have been helped uh, through this platform. Uh, already people in Uganda asking me about the platform, what do <sighs> they need to do. So okay. I'm just, just sharing the link and sharing the website and, and telling them, hey, you can join this and, and let's go on. So my role here as you asked, is basically to share about the opportunities that lie here in Africa, uh, in Uganda, particularly because this is my where I, 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 I was born and this is where I live. So Africa is not only, is no longer a, a continent for, for, for begging. The thing is, we have the human resource and we have the straight-minded people in terms of business that are willing to take it to another level. And I think the best way to help Africa right now is to do business with it, is to do business with our countries, is to freely do business with us, is to, to freely help our people build their capacity so that they really understand what standards are there when I want to export a service, when I want to export a product, when someone comes to do business with me, what are some of the business ethics that I am expected to follow? You see, it's, it's different uh, talking about business, but also it's, it's another to, to understand what the do's and don'ts of the business, the trading, the partnering, the joint venturing, you know, the, the having a consortium with someone and you're doing business. What are some of those things? And for me, I'm very passionate. I'm most passionate about how do we build that capacity? How do you build, have that capacity building for the human resource, for the people that are delivering these services? 
And uh, I believe there are so many uh, American companies that would love to come here and, and, you know, tap into that market, tap into the services industry. For example, in Uganda, uh, we just started uh, exploring, you know, exploring our oil, oil and gas. Dion, you've been here. I think you really, uh, you know about that. So uh, there is a lot of capacity building that is needed in terms of standardization, in terms of ISO, in terms of HAC, in terms of uh, training people to really be world standard. Uh, we also have a young budding industry in terms of energy, in terms of, uh, uh, in terms of green energy uh, and, and, and the direction we are taking in terms of saving our environment, the services are really, really needed. So we need that kind of capacity building. I, I want to talk to someone who is willing to help people um, upgrade uh, in terms of their standards, in terms of their, their education. I'm not talking about only education in terms of, of degrees. I'm talking about the certification, the real needed thing, the real needed content certification in helping people uh, you know, uh, get to those standards. I know, Dion, that you've been in the industry of exporting and, and you know, uh, this year, but I'm sure there are certain standards that you're following. So we want to know people like Dion from their experience. How have they reached there and how have they made their products, their shea butter, acceptable on the American markets? And that doesn't just come. It comes within the intentionality of helping people and training them to reach those standards. Thank you so much, Moses. And that's exactly what this is all about. Uh, it's about preparing people to be able to leverage this opportunity. And that's why we serve as a clearinghouse. When I say we, I'm talking about me. I'm talking about Moses. I'm talking about Dion. I'm talking about Nicole. I'm talking about a whole lot of real professionals out there, uh, international trade uh, consultants, customs brokers. I'm talking about accountants. I'm talking about people we, who can write grants. I'm talking about branding and marketing experts, people in the hub, people within our organizations who you would be meeting and they're well positioned to assist our people to take advantage of this. Um, you know, you cannot do this alone. If you try to do this alone, you're going to get your fingers burned. You're going to get frustrated. And that is why you really, really, really need to work with organizations like us. We have partnership with about 11 chambers of commerce in Africa. We have country agents in about nine countries in Africa. And we have a whole lot of relationship with uh, investment agencies in Africa. In fact, we've had uh, a program where we brought um, agency CEOs from investment agencies from different countries to come and speak about the opportunity in their, in their country. And that's one of the sessions we're going to be having next week as well. Uh, doing business in Africa series. We have about five countries that will be spotlighted as well. This is very, very important. Uh, this is something we all have to join our hands uh, to be part of. So I'm going to quickly um, introduce Nicole. Uh, Nicole Sharpa, you've, you've heard Dion talking about her partner all along. And so I have the uh, Nicole Ash, the co-founder of Founders Nature Shared Butter as well. Hi, Nicole. Say hello to us and our audience. Hello, everyone. Thank you for having me on this platform. Awesome, awesome. Thank you for joining us. I know you didn't plan to jump in, but now that we have you <laughs> and you've been listening to, to Dion, would you like to add to what she has said? Are there different perspectives, additional information that you would like to share as well? It's de definitely um, what Dion uh, mentioned is, is the whole direction that we ended up going into was not our own. We know that we were lifted by God and, and sent to do certain things. We just ended up having these great opportunities that can only come from God. And so we thank him for that. Um, first, mm -hmm. entering Uganda and being able to help these women who were um, uh, survivors of domestic violence. And um, and that happened to be both of our passions, helping advocating on behalf of these women before we even met um, our um, the pastor there in Uganda. Um, and then now it just blew up to be a whole project, as Dion mentioned, um, the Marembe African Village. And um, we have the women there, we're able to 
um, or for some of them who give us um, proper business plans, um, microloans. Actually, they're not even loans, they're grants. We just give them the money to start their own businesses because we really want to see them build themselves and be able to self be self-sufficient um, for themselves and their families so that they can be able to, to grow and without the abuser in their life. And so the women have been improving in every aspect of their life, but there's so many goals that we have for them that we just, we're still pushing on for. So we're always looking for other um, destiny helpers to be able to help us to even catapult the foundation even further and even beyond the borders of Uganda. And then we, we, we ended up in Nigeria. Did you want to ask me something? <laughs> no, no, I was gonna, please continue. continue. Yeah, then we, then we ended up in Nigeria, um, not physically. Um, Dion and I did go to Uganda, but... Um, I'm okay, very you soon me. you're going to be in Nigeria too, very soon. I'm sure you're going to be in Nigeria very soon. I'm going to yeah. make sure of that. Yeah. <laughs> and we ended up in Nigeria with the Shea Butter business, um, which was another great opportunity that just came up um, and that we're still working right now with the, the gentleman that you introduced us to. And as Dion mentioned, just having you there as oversight is very, very helpful. And um, there's so much that we learned um, uh, in, in the process beforehand to make it to now that it is more streamlined, um, the work that we're going to be doing with the gentleman from Ghana. So, and we thank you for that again. Of course, uh, that's, that's, that's why we're here. Uh, the prosperity of the continent is our own prosperity. The, the prosperity of our partners here is our own prosperity yeah. as well. So I'm yeah. glad, I'm glad. And thank you, Nicole. Thank you very much um, for for turning your story into a glory. You're turning your story into something that impacts people's lives. And I tell you, you don't even know the lives <laughs> that you're touching. I'm telling you because there's a ripple effect. You help a mother and she's able to send her kids to school and the kids grows up to be someone great in life. And that case, you know, change a whole lot of millions of lives. And that's what life is all about. We have to, and, and I, every every session that I have, I talk about what CNN said, every single session. And I'm going to repeat that. CNN said that uh, we, we, the diaspora, we are Africa's secret weapon. We are the weapon that Africa has. And they're not leveraging, they're not using it. We have the knowledge, we have the skills, we have the resources to be able to support and work with the continent. It's, it's a good marriage. It's just a win-win situation. And so we celebrate both Dihan and Nicole for what you are doing because this is exactly what we want people in the diaspora to do. Awesome. Um, before we round up, uh, we have um, just about a few more minutes, nine more minutes. I want to quickly just echo and share some of the some of the things that would happen uh, at this event next week. It's going to be on Friday, March 10, and Saturday, March 11, and it's going to be at the Newark International Airport Marriott Hotel. Uh, we're going to have a whole great session. We're going to be talking about some of the things we're doing and. Well, that what well, what we what we have done and what we're going to do for the rest of the year, uh, and, and one of such is the retail incubation program, uh, in help in trying to help our audience to get market in the U.S. We decided to launch a retail space where African product can be sold, and it doesn't have to be African product; it could be a uh, Caribbean product. But the goal is to help underserved uh, minority African American. Our business is looking to get into retail market. So we're launching that next month and we're launching it at the biggest mall in New Jersey. That's the West Street Mall. So you have a product. Now you can sell your product. You can sell your product in the U.S. And we're very excited about that. And also there will be a session on trade finance for U.S. and African exporters. Um, it's going to, this program, this session will highlight uh, programs offering one-stop trade finance support to businesses that wants to expand globally. They're going to talk about grant for export, securing loans for export, and things like that. Uh, another session would be on cross-border trade, export and import compliance. Like I had said before, compliance 
is a big challenge. Being able to know what you need to do to get your product across border and being able to get them on retail shelves without falling into trouble with either FDA, um, customs and other agencies like that. So we have international trade lawyers, we have customs experts that will be at this event and, and two other businesses as well that will be in that panel on, 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 on Friday and Saturday. Also, we're going to be talking about AFTA, which is the um, African Continental Free Trade Agreement. Um, we're going to be talking about AFTA export import opportunities for MSMEs in Africa and the U.S. The opportunity for U.S. exporter here is when you go sell or export into Africa, you would typically go into one country and to do a bis to do business in another country, you would have to be, get you know be compliant, maybe register a business and all of those processes that that is difficult, like Moses had said. But with the AFTA instrument, you can get into one country and be able to scale into other countries in Africa without having to go through the entire process of getting your product and business registered. And that's the whole essence of AFTA. It was 1.3 billion market nights, way more than that. So even if you're selling a product for $1, and you're able to get just 1% of the market. So you can think about the potential opportunity for US businesses that want to go into Africa. We want to share with you an opportunity that is not being talked about that you can export into Africa and take advantage of it. Um, then, of course, I talked about the Doing Business in Africa Country Spotlight series. We have Kenya, Nigeria, Liberia, Uganda, um, Syria alone that will be speaking. I think there's another country uh, that I missed, but that will be speaking at this event, just sharing with you what are the opportunity that is available and what are the ease of doing business and how to leverage them for you to do business with them. We also have a deal room, a deal room is where we're going to have those with active deals, opportunities and offers. We're going to connect you with people who may be interested in your, in your deal or in your offers or in the opportunity that you like to present. It's going to be curated and it's going to be select businesses. So if you're out there, you have an active opportunity to buy or to sell and you want to be featured at this event, you can reach out to us and we will be sure to, to consider that. So it's, it's a packed program. It's a packed program and it's really, really exciting just talking about it. So we look forward to having you attend. Uh, before I ask you to give your last comment before we draw the curtain, I remember that someone was asking about how do they join the organization? I think it was Moses that said that, that how do they join? We have a hub. Our hub is to connect buyers and sellers and people together. And so if you like to join, if you like to be part of our hub, I'm going to be sharing with you now a link that you can use to be able to connect um, with our hub. I'm going to be doing that in a the, in the, in the little, little while so that you can join um you can join our hub. So you can go to trade.usafricahub.com. It's going to ask you five questions. You fill out those questions. We will get your request and we would review your application without paying anything. Then we would add you into the hub. So that's about it. Again, I want to ask you to provide your last comment before we leave. So let me start with uh, Moses. Well, uh, thank you very much. Uh, first of all, this has been very interesting. Uh, the first uh, thing probably that I would like to ask is, 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 is Dion and, and Nicole. Uh, I want to ask them how they, they be here and I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> 
So yeah, so this is actually even an opportunity for uh, to connect with these wonderful ladies who are doing great work in, in our backyard here. And, you know, so it would be really great stuff to, to connect and, and, you know, uh, and discuss areas of collaboration already. But uh, as for you, Benga, we have no words for yeah, to describe what you're doing. I know that many lives are changing because uh, you're helping uh, traders cross borders. As for me, um, mine, I am just passionate to see people that they perform and thrive in the market. And so I am for, you know, growing and developing the African talents to be able to deliver world-class services without question, okay, uh, with the right attitude. I mean, what we are talking about is not a one-person a one a one uh, show. It's not a one-person business. We are talking about uh, millions of people uh, joining this industry and changing still millions and billions of lives. So... Uh, I want to thank you very much for allowing us to share this platform with millions and billions of people across the world. But also I believe that the products and services are going to be shared here. They, they are credible, okay? Already Darren has said that the person that they have connected with, they're doing wonders. So these are credible services. These are credible products. And the sky is not the limit and, and I want to thank you for sharing this moment with the world. Thank you so much, Mr. Moses Waswa. It was a great pleasure to have you. Of course, Dion, please uh, give us your last word. Yes, I'm going to speak on behalf of me and Nicole. She had to go to another meeting because, you know, we're still in business hours here. So <laughs> she had to run to another meeting. But Benga, thank you so much for having us on this platform um, again to to share um, our challenges to help other people not have to go through those challenges because I believe that what we went through helps to highlight why what you're doing is so important because what we went through, you know, could have been avoided. You know what I mean? So we appreciate what you're doing and Moses, it's been a pleasure to meet you as well and we will definitely connect because there's no reason why we're in your backyard and we don't have a connection <laughs> with you. <laughs> Yeah, maybe I'll also help to, to solve more issues and challenges. Yes, yeah. yes, definitely, definitely. So I just thank you again for this platform, for having us on. Um, and it's, again, this as I'll, I will piggyback on what Moses said. This is a credible um, organization you have, and it is a definitely, there is a need, there is a void that you are filling. Thank you. Awesome. So, Dion, thank you for that kind word. Uh, people are asking how to connect with you and Nicole. Um, um, what would be the can, best way? Okay. They can send us an email, info okay. at Let me write. N, N as in Nancy, S as in Sam, butter.com. Info at nsbutter.com. Okay. Um, so it's right on the screen for those who would like to connect with um, Dion and Nicole. Uh, Moses, uh, how do we reach you for those who may want to connect? I've, I've seen one or two people said they want to connect with you. So I, 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 I have shared my email in your chat. It's moses.waswa at swiftminds.org. But you can also connect with me on LinkedIn and uh, Twitter, the same names. So that is my business email, actually. You can just send me an email for any uh, assistance and collaboration. Awesome, awesome. So on that note, uh, I want to thank each and every one of you who had listened, made comments, and also encouraged uh, um, our guests this afternoon and this evening for Moses. Uh, again, it's me being uh, Motaya. It's a great pleasure to be here. And I look forward to seeing you next week. Uh, for those who will not be there in person, you can join us online. Um, all the links are out there. You can reach out, reach out to us anytime. We look forward to connecting with you. And until next time, I ask you to be inspired to succeed in all that you do. Thank you so much, everyone. Have a good day. <laughs>